<laughs> but Deja, you know, a lot of people, a lot of fans, when they knew that you were coming here on the show, a lot of Britney fans were hitting me up. I was like, oh, shoot. Hold on, guys. <laughs> yeah, but you, man. you were part of some of her, her, her biggest tracks and some of the most, you know, fan favorite tracks, especially during that dark period in her life. Gimme More is a huge, um, huge single for her. Um, can, what can you tell us about working on the Blackout album? And we're going to talk a little bit about Circus as well. Mm-hmm. I, um, Blackout. I, I met with Teresa Butler, the Barbara Whites, and she just was like, hey, and she's so, like, hey, man, whatever, you know, just, just have fun, just do it. So, it was a lot of times where I did was just left in the studio, sometimes without written, mm. to just create songs. So, I was just doing songs and doing tracks, and we started off in Vegas, and then we ended up in L.A., and, um, and it was just, uh, when when Britney finally she was in the room with us in LA I mean in Vegas Mm -hmm. and um so we kind of got the ball rolling and got a vibe and then uh we went to LA and I was just creating in the room and just coming up with different beats so I remember going back to Virginia working on something and um we're still making beats for her and finally got back to different writers and and wrote some of the songs I remember doing I remember doing Give Me More Beat. <laughs> People might not even understand it. I remember doing Give Me More Beat mm-hmm. in a Fantasia session in the headphones. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. So I did a Give Me More Beat in the headphones in a Fantasia session. And uh, then we got to the studio and we switched studios and Carrie, Chris, Jim Dean were in there and they wrote the song and it was amazing. I remember doing um, this record that was a bonus track called Get Back. I did that in a Catholic C session in the headphones. Oh, so, multitask. These things that just come. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just how I go. You know, these things just come. Sometimes you can plan it, sometimes you don't. I can be, you know, a lot of things happen that way when I'm sitting in the session on another artist and I do a track that just might not be for that artist and it's perfect for this one. Mm-hmm. And you, that's a producer part of so that's one of those things we go through all the time where we have to make the right decision for the track or for the record. Um, but the blackout sessions were just kind of me by myself or with my engineers, uh, Marcella or um, with the writers and then Brittany came in, we worked a little bit of the house, we worked a little bit in Vegas together, and we finally worked more in the studio in LA and wrapped everything up. And then we, then we did the mixes ourselves, and that's why I did the transitions and all the crazy little in-between beats and switches and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, that was fun because I was really left. It was really on me, and I was really left to do whatever I wanted to do. Wow. So I got to display my own thing, and that was that felt great. What was it like being in the studio with Britney Spears? Though I mean, at this point in her career, she's I mean, huge, and I, I think she's become right. even bigger since then. But you know, it was also a dark period in her life. But what was it like being in the studio with Britney Spears? You know, it was it was it was awesome in the beginning, and she was the sweetest, most happiest thing, and um, so it was just. It was uh, it was difficult to see her go through the transition because we were there through the transition and things got a little bit rough. Mm. And um, we went, we seen a happy break to a more uh, to herself and really knowing what's going on. And um, that was of course see the transition, but it was good to see her again and she was all better and back herself, back to herself in a circus. Yeah. But. Um, you know, I know people. People might have heard stories where, with Michael Jackson, and he's in the when he's in the booth, he's full blown dancing while he's doing vocals. Mm-hmm. It was almost the same thing with Britney. Like she would be in there. If you look through the glass, she would be doing like choreography. <laughs> wow! Like to give me more, I was seeing her just dancing. Um, I remember playing "Get Naked" for her in the studio, and she was just dancing and, and having a good time. She was having a ball. So. It was good to see she was really loving it, and uh, her whole thing is just I want to dance. I just want to have, 
just wanted to be energy and and feel good, you know. You know that's a, uh, the the Blackout um, LP is one of the fans' uh, favorite albums of, of all of all her mm-hmm. of all her albums. That's a huge compliment. Yeah, man. I don't even. It's, it, I can't believe it. Sometimes we hit up every day, and I want anybody who's listening that's a Britney fan, please understand that I get your messages. <laughs> I might not can't respond to everybody, and I'm I'm doing what I can. And I definitely appreciate all the love and support for that particular project. You know, it definitely means a lot. And every time I see, you know, a tweet or an Instagram about Britney and what I've done, it means a lot because, you know, we go through these these years as a producer and we all want a pinnacle project. We all want a project that we feel like is, is ours or one that we showcase our best work. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad the fans, even though it didn't do as well as it could have done. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad to see it affect the culture that it, uh, in the way that it has. Have you so heard? Thank you again, Sam. Definitely. Um, you know, it, it, you, you worked on the Circus Project, and I want to talk quickly a little bit about that. But the, her new album hasn't, you know, of all her albums, hasn't done as well. Um, what would you say about her new record, or what she needs to do musically now that can capture her fans uh, like 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 it used to? I think she's made the perfect landscape with Blackout to do more urban based mm. records and not so pop, you know, and, uh, and and polished. You know, I feel like we need to get back to the grit and the mm. grime a little bit with, with, with her being in the center. You know, pretty pretty grit amongst the hard hitting beats. So, you know, let's take Dark Horse for instance. Um, Katy Perry. Yeah. We didn't we didn't necessarily do it trap beat but our, our music was hitting hard like that and, and along those lines and years ago five six years ago so we made the landscape she's the originator of hard hitting pop and that's what she needs to get back to you know well uh, if, if she's not gonna do that block. <laughs> either way it has to, either way it has to be edge you know it has to be edge because a lot of a lot of the fans, you know, was before this, this this latest album, Britney Jean was released. A lot of fans, you know, there were rumors that you know it was going to have a very blackout uh, feel to it. But I guess a lot of people were disappointed that it didn't. Yeah, I guess that was uh, because that was the information I was given as well. And, and when I started creating for the project, that's the direction I went right into. And uh, I guess with what I am, kind of. Being in charge of the project, he had a different vision, and um, that's what you got. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I was hoping that it was going to be a little harder, just a tad bit darker, and um, hopefully the next one, you know, we'll see. Definitely. It's the Circus LP, because so you, you go from working with her on the Blackout album and then Circus, where, you know, pretty much, you know, to the world, she's sort of gotten it back on track. What was the sessions for mm-hmm. Circus LP like? Um, we we did we did a bunch of me. I did a bunch of songs. I feel like I had a different direction at the time. I wanted to do more rock and fun, the guitars, and still edgy, still up tempo and danceable, mm-hmm. but rock and fun. And uh, did a bunch of different songs, and none of them really stuck. So I just went back. And just do back out again. So I went. Um, that's where the record "Kill the Lights" came from. Mm. When I Another fan favorite. Going back into that. Yeah, so that's why uh, I went back into that that portal of music. And uh, but it was all good, you know. Came old in the studio, vibing, coming up with records, and then we finally got in the studio with her to record them and things like that. So it was, you know, good to be back in with her and working and recording records again. Um. But same, it's always free flowing. Well, I like maybe I like to create a free, a free flowing energy, mm-hmm. of creativity in the studio with no second guessing and overthinking. You know, I feel like a lot of my success had those ingredients, mm. and I try to keep that same thing with whoever I'm working with. You know, let's do whatever, mm-hmm. whatever the artist's vision. Let's let's try to make that vision come to life. I feel like that's my job as producer to uh, enhance whatever the artist is. Um, how they want to portray themselves in whatever project, you know. Yeah. We kind of go in together and I lay the landscape. So 
the circus project, you know, I, I think ultimately they wanted to be safe and um, just do good music, do, do big records and, and things like that. So that's what happened. And I think it was a good step in a, in a, in a positive direction for us.